Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's Summit High School Theater Arts Performance. At this time, we ask you to please turn off all cellular devices and refrain from filming or taking photographs of the show. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy Peter and the Starcatcher. As high as a cloud and lighter than air. Then loop the loop and up to the stars. I dreamed about flying all the time. What? Girls dream? Up to the stars. I like that. Me too. Eventually, of course, we dream other dreams. We change. We grow up. It always happens. Nothing is forever. That's the rule. Everything ends. And so our story begins. Suppose that all these planks and ropes are now the British Empire. And we are lords. And captains. Mothers. Orphans. Sailors. Pirates. Serapical kings. And use your thoughts to hoist the sails and deck the ships awaiting us this grey misty dawn in 1885. A crucial year in the reign of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. God, God save her! who by her grace had only just knighted a new peer of the realm. Lord Leonard Astor, dedicated minister to the queen and devoted father. To Molly Astor, whose mother flew up to heaven when she was only six years old. Then the years have followed and Nanny was employed to care for Molly and provide her with the essentials of young womanhood. While taking her with him on each royal mission, Leonard Astor gave Molly a life few girls would normally know. A life that made her insatiably curious Insufferably bright and pretty much friendless at school. Friendless? Ha! Friendless, you mean like. Leave me alone! Our friends! Most useless creatures on earth! Look at them! Cast out by mothers who can't feed him or love him. No mothers at St. Norbert's, only schoolmasters. Much as I hate to lose you, you, and you, and you. I won't stand in the way of opportunity. Here's your trip on a ship. What ship? What trip? Sorry, I'm lost. Me Boys! Too. We're lost. Boys! So it was, on the brink of a new adventure, that, that three filthy orphans, orphans and Lord Leonard Astor, his friendless Molly, and their nanny, Mrs. Bumbridge, <laughs> journey that dawn to the docks of Portsmouth, where two trunks are delivered to two ships, sharing the very same dock. Two trunks, deliberately similar to each other in their... Drunkness. One of them contained the precious cargo belonging to the Queen to be accompanied by Leonard Astor aboard one of the ships, a spanking new frigate. Commanded by Leonard's old school chum, the legendary Robert Falcon Scott, captain of the Wasp. <laughs> Fastest ship afloat bound for the remote kingdom of Rundu. The other trunk filled with sand, courtesy of me, Bill Slank, captain of the other ship. The Neverland. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Neverland, a slower ship. And long in the poop, a merchant ship taking a slower route to Rondo just to be safe. And while nobody's looking. While nobody's oh, looking. Oh, <laughs> oh, mark the Queen's trunk, the one supposed to go on the wasp. Then at the last sec, all ashore who's going ashore are switching. Get this trunk aboard the Neverland, you garbage! And go sell these boys into slavery! Cheer up, lads, you're off to Rundu to be helpers to the king! Food for snakes, more like it. Prayer <laughs> boys, coming aboard! Magic call, say goodbye! Goodbye to who? There's nobody who cares. Which is why I hate, I hate, I hate grown ups! Stir your cargo, start your play, you do, I do! Put that trunk in my cabin, you salt junkies! The poor top is boys in the world. To be great, to be great, my lord. Swampers to the manacles! Swell the boys, be so. Shroud the hemp and jigger the cocks! With everything safely aboard, final preparations are made on the deck of the Neverland. Call hands to now! 
bright, smart uniforms, led by one Lieutenant Gregor, ready to accompany Lord Leonard Astor aboard Her Majesty's vessel, the Wasp. Captain Scott's compliments, Your Lordship, but would you join him aboard the Wasp as soon as possible? A moment. Captain Slank? Here, Your Lordship. I'm taking the Queen's treasure to Rondoon aboard the Wasp. I leave a more precious cargo here on the Neverland. Guard her well. Mrs. Bumbrake, bring her to me. Molly, my Molly. Please let me come with you, Daddy. I don't like it on this ship. But you're safer here on the Neverland. By the time I arrive in Rondoon, I'll have completed my mission and we'll be together once more. <gasps> Daddy, look! A cat! The ship's cat! A lucky sign! Here, Puss Molly, Puss! Molly, please be careful. Oh, come on, Daddy. It's all right. He's a sweet little puss, isn't him? Oh, oh Molly loves all God's little creatures. <laughs> You're all grown up now, aren't you? I am, Daddy. Courage now. Promise. Promise. Oh, dear. Just then, a crate of boys bursts open. One of the boys almost falls out. Hanging upside down, right over Molly's head. He stares at her. She stares at him. He has an air about him. The look of a boy who doesn't miss much or say much about it. Back in the box, you monkeys! Something about the boy makes Molly feel as if she just grew up a little. Daughter, a word. There isn't any treasure in the Queen's trunk. What is in it has to be destroyed. By order of Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. God save her! I'll have to move quickly before the King of Rondu even knows I'm there. But how are you going to destroy it? Can you keep it a secret? I can. We can! An eerie mirror of the British Empire at its colonial zenith. Of course, those traits led the dodo to its extinction. An eerie mirror of the British Empire after its colonial zenith, but thereby hangs another tale. And don't ever take this off or let anyone else touch it. You know what's in this amulet, Molly. You know how to use it if you're ever in trouble. But what if something happens to you? You need me on the wasp. Too dangerous. I won't have it. But I want to be a part of the mission. If you can't be British, you can go straight home and back to school, young lady. Mrs. Bumbrake. No, please, I'll be good, I promise. Shut the faucet, Molly. Blubbering on like a whale when the world is your oyster. Be a woman. Yes, Nana. As soon as I'm done in Rondoon, I'll take a few weeks in the antipodes. Scare up some rare bird eggs, huh? I'll even teach you to speak pompous. Yes, Daddy. There's my little star catcher. Not a full-fledged star catcher, just an apprentice. If I were a star catcher, I'd be on the waft with you. Slank hears the word star catcher. But a cannon is fired from the deck of the wasp. Patience, Daddy. Keep mind, Mr. Bumbrake. Don't you worry about the wasp. We need to get it on you. Godspeed. Off you go, your lordship. TTFB. Are we? That's nice. Now, out! Where are you, good for nothing bucket of scum? I'm here, sir! Lock these two in the cabin for safekeeping. I ain't taking no chances. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't fancy no dainty daughters roaming my deck. Now, pop it. With pleasure. The cabin can smell no worse than you. <gasps> can we have Kitty with us? Stand clear of the old pussy pet and rip your hands clean off. Say the word, madam, and I might let you out for promenade and we can do some petting of our own, eh? Don't trouble yourself. 
I'm sure. Come on, my girl. It's all right, ma'am. Alf will see you safely stand. Oh, thank you, kind sir. No, thank you, kind lady. Your eyes are as green as the sea, and your hair's almost as wavy. Oh, take me below, sir. Fuck the silly cow in the junior suite. <laughs> what are you snickering at your pickaroons? Put that trunk in my cabin. Borrow the gym and let fly the better stand, or you'll curse the day you were born. On to Rundoon, you fungus! There's profitable trade to be made in Rundoon. <laughs> Got your sea legs? 
Oh, thank you. Get us out of here. Hungry, please help. Why? Excuse me, sir. Quick question for the captain. What are you, Piggy Spikesman? I'm the leader. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm the oldest. I am the oldest, and I say shut it. But I'm hungry. It's your lovely day, then, ain't it? Finally. I'll swallow that down quick. My appetite. Any good? <coughs> it's alive. It's worms. You fed me worms. I won't eat that. Please, sir. Is there a vegetarian alternative? <laughs> Back in my day, pigs weren't quite so particular. Don't hog it all, give me. You said you wouldn't eat it. You! Wait! What are you doing? You'll get us a beating. But ain't that you? I'm called Mr. On This Vessel. Mock respect for a lifetime of seafaring. Never mind him. He's got real problems with authority. Ah. So do I. Listen, I know worms is rough victuals, boys, but they'll grease the pipes till we set you down in Rondoon. A question, mister. What? Do we have to stay down here in the dark? Till Slank hands you over to King Zarboff. Is the king nice to his helpers? That's true. I've got a sick feeling about this. I'll think of something. No, you won't. Ah! In my experience, boys are sadly slow thinkers. What is that? What are you? I'm Adele. No way. We saw a girl once, headmaster's daughter. It was nothing like you. It was all, arr, arr, gonna get ya. <laughs> Who's the leader here? Who wants to know? Molly Asta. Dr. Pretorius back home says that I have an extraordinarily high level of brain power. If you're so smart, how come you're stuck on this dirt bucket? I am not stuck. I'm going to meet my father in Rondoon. He has important things to do. We have important things to do. No, we don't. I'm the leader. I say we got some. She's not the leader. You. You. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 13. I'm 13. Right. Well, I almost forgot. Today's my birthday. I'm 15. <laughs> If you were 13 and today's your birthday, you'd be 14. I only celebrate odd-numbered birthdays. Wait a minute. It doesn't matter how old you are. I'm still the leader. The leader has to be a boy. Hey, up our end of the ship, we get served proper food. I could lead you there, but that would make me the leader. Proper food? Really? Yes, just tell me your name. Why should we? Only that if you have names, you get to serve meat. Ted! Ted, I'm Ted! And I call him Tubby, because he's food of sex. I am not food of Do you write poems about pie? To pass the time? Hide beans in your blanket? It's a blood sugar thing. Faint at the merest whisper of, get this, sticky pudding? Sticky pudding! It's so good! <laughs> like I said, food obsessed. I'm Prentice. I'm in charge here. Ever notice, Ted, the more you claim leadership, the more it eludes you? Oh, snap! <laughs> and what are you, boy? Leave me alone. Sorry. Don't take it personally. He's rude to everyone. It's why he gets beatings. And why he's got no friends. Go on, tell her your name, why don't you? <laughs> What's so funny? Thanks, Ted. He doesn't have a name. Been orphaned too long to remember. Brevkin calls him Mule. No, go on! You and your stupid names, go follow some stupid girl. Like we need your permission anyway, friendless. Doesn't cost any more to be nice, charmless. <laughs> what about the food? Fair warning, boy. I shall expose you utterly. As no one had ever shown the slightest interest in him before, the boy's eyes began to sparkle as the lore of competition wiped some of the misery from his face. Right, follow me. Right, follow mother. Molly. Molly, that's what I said. Follow Molly. The boy may have wished to be alone, but he didn't really mean it. The sparkle in his eyes fades as strange sounds in the dark make him remember the orphanage. Make him think about... Where's that you? Here, sir. You know, shades and ask me, Mule. I look at this film. Oh, don't hit me, sir. Cesspit's dirty work. A mule afraid of his own shadow. Be a man. Thank you, Mr. Grimkin. I'll call it herself. Disgrace to the mother that left him. Oh, for the At the bed 
recollection of mother, the boy heard a wisp of a song he could barely remember, and saw a shadow of a home he hoped he might have. Father and son. Mother and child. And even with so little ground for hope, still he believed, despite his distress and sorrow, that one day such a home would be his. Home. Oh. then rule number one. Life is meant to be horrible. Ah! Rule number two. There are no orphans in heaven. Ah! Rule number three. Mrs. Grimpkin's ugly. <laughs> my lord, that I'm a bloodthirsty outlaw. <laughs> oh, I said, but he still wouldn't give up the key. We haven't got our nights, me. People have paid for nannies and parking. Stand aside. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Or I'm not. I'm not. What am I? Black stars! Yeah! I refer, of course, to this. The trademark of every man, woman, and child in the family, dating right back to the amoeba. 
Bieber. Yet for us, the face foliage has been, oh, so much more than a lawn on the lips, sir. Tis what we are and why we are it. And when everyone else got out of the pirate business, the stash stuck it out, knowing that one day my ship would come in. This is the day. This is the ship. <laughs> now, cover up that key, my lord. Not a chance, you spam base. Too <laughs> It's me. Is that my lord's coat you're holding? Looks to be about your size, Captain. Oh, what the world is. Tool bag is wearing this season. Oh. That's not the oh, sleeve, so awesome. me. So, call me a fell, Captain. So, very, call me a fell. I say, it's me. What is it the men call me? Nancy, say? <laughs> no, the other thing. <laughs> oh, oh, ruthless, sir. Ruthless, heartless, and peerless. Guilty as charged. Now give us the key. Never! Playing games is for children, Aster. And I hate, hate, hate children! Ah! Bring it in, Gomez. Keep Sanchez, sir. Just bring it in. Thanks ever so. The Wasp is my ship now, and everything aboard her belongs to me. Including that treasure Victoria thinks nobody knows about. Silly old queen. God save her! Queen. God save her! Victoria. God save her! Banana. God save her! Oopsie! Ha <laughs> Here's two things. When I open this swag, I'll be the single most significant pirate in the world, the solar system, and any other place yet to be discovered in the universe. That's only one thing! The second thing! Is a dilemma. A large one. The Cadillac Escalade of dilemmas, for in point of fact, a little bird tells me that your darling daughter is sailing to Runtoon on the safer southern route aboard the Naval Nerd. The Neverland, sir. I'm sorry? The Neverland, sir. Neverland, Naval Nerd, same letters, I was pretty close, pretty darn close. Splitting rabbits, really. Hairs, sir. Splitting hairs, that too. <laughs> oh, oh, just a sec. I know you love your Molly above rubies. What do you say we take a quick detour, pluck her off the Neverland, so you can watch her die? Unless, of course, you're feeling a wincy bit more amenable. Ooh, love your locket, but what's in your pocket? Allow me. <clears throat> Done and dusted, tempers and custard. I got the key, boys. Ah! Yes. My father, he's in trouble. Your next thing is glowing, ringing. Don't ask me about that. I can ask whatever I want. I'm the leader. Way off, Prentice. Come on, you have to tell. Fine. Listen in. My father is going on a secret mission for the Queen. What's a mission? Molly? Where are you, girl? Shh! Down this gangway and keep it quiet! Tell me again. What was it called when we ate last night? Pork chops, pork salad, and pork belly pie. Greatest night of my life! There'll be more if we don't get caught. Pork. Beautiful word. There's that ringing again. Her next thing. No, it's coming from someplace else. Oh, behind this door. No, boy, don't open that. Holy. Flakes. Cat flying. We ask you now to imagine a grown cat in flight. Suspended in space as if hanging by a string. Although the boys don't have to imagine. Because there they are and there's the cat. And that cat is definitely flying. And those bells are definitely ringing. And that cabin was definitely glowing. Glowing, ringing, flying. It can only mean one thing. Star stuff. Star stuff. The Queen's trunk is in Slate's cabin. <laughs> Nothing to see here, boys. Move along. But that cat was... No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Tubby's right. Your neck thing was glowing and Slate's cat was totally flying. Oh, you know what's been fun? How's about a bedtime story? What's that? Oh, ha ha. Very amusing. Oh my gosh, you poor things. You've never had a bedtime story. This might 
sound kind of defensive, but it's hard to have a bedtime when you don't have a bed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean- Tell you what! You say sorry so easy, like the rough patch is smoothed over, no hard feelings and everything's fixed. Well, no. There's dark, a mass of darkness in the world, and if you get trapped in that cave like us, it beats you down. Sorry can't fix it. Better to say nothing than sorry. And it's night, and I'm too scared to sleep. I look through the cracks, you know, up between the wood nailed over the window, and I see all those little stars that I can't reach. And I think that in a hundred years, or, or two, or three hundred maybe, boys will be free. And life will be so beautiful that nobody will ever say sorry again. Because nobody will have to. I think about that a lot. Well, that's more than he said in the last 13 years. So bedtime stories? Not a big priority, okay? No, it's not okay. I'm giving you one. It's a gift. It's the least I can do. Like, um, Sleeping Beauty. Yes, Sleeping Beauty's a good one. There's a kiss in it. True love's kiss. Yeah! I don't know what that is. <laughs> then I'll tell you. Come on, back to your cabins, and I'll be mother. Now, the story of Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time. That's how they always start. Once upon a time, a beautiful baby was born. And that beautiful baby had a big bushy handlebar. And it grew out as they grew up, and they both lived only ever after. The end. From this day forth, it'll be nothing but pleasure cruises and the odd America's Cup for me. Now open it, Smee! Open and prepend! <laughs> what is that? It's sand, sir. Sand? But that's impossible! When you say sand, you refer to the utterly worthless, granular material one associates with the water's edge. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I see. Perchance you think a treasure trunk sans treasure has put my piratical BVDs in a twist. <laughs> How wrong you are. Yes! I'd hope to be hip deep in diamonds, but they're a poor substitute for what I really crave. A bona fide hero to help me feel whole. For without a hero, well, that I? A pirate in part, half a villain, ruthless but toothless. And then I saw you and I thought, could it be? Could he be the one I waited for? Would he, for example, give up something precious for the daughter he loves? But no, he gives up sand. Now let's see. Hero with treasure, very good. Hero with no treasure, eh, doable. <laughs> no hero and a trunk full of sand, not so much. Now where's my treasure? <laughs> what if they swapped the trunk, sir? Swapped, you say? Oh, stupid idea, Smee, stupid, stupid! Swapped! Yes! Right there on the dark deck, deck! In which case, the, the, the trunk with the treasure is aboard the Neverland! Yes, check! What do we know about the Neverland? She's a slow ship, Captain, sadly slow. And what of our ship, the Wasp? Super fast, Captain, super fast! Which means we're leads ahead of her by now, Einstein! Change your course, hard about! You're behind this swamp reactor, or I'm the Queen of England. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I said, hard about, Gilmiz. Be such a sub. Burn rubber, Bubba. Be such a sub. Hit the pedal, Greta. I did be tender on your devil. Ah, give it to me, you shroom. You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Now do it. The chase is on. The die is cast. The game's upon. I want that treasure. 
boys. Catch me in Neverland! Planet. 
Wait, six and a half? I'm just an apprentice. Okay, so prove it. What? Go on, amaze me with your special talents. It's not like some magic show. I'm not some magician. Okay, I mean, if you can't actually do anything, uh, then... Fine, whatever. To have faith is to have wings. Whoa! Satisfied? So the cat was flying! Oh, come on, I want to fly too, like you and the cat! Oh, get real! The star stuff has to be destroyed! You want me to destroy it? Don't be ridiculous! My father is taking it to the hottest active volcano, Mount Jalapeno. <laughs> Where's that? Rundoon, wouldn't you know it? Follow me as King Zarbok would kill for a thimble of star stuff. Hey! I can help. See, I'm going to be the king's new helper, so when I get to run Dune, I can totally just You are not going to be the king's new helper. You're going to be snake food. King Zarbok likes buying orphans and feeding them to his snakes. So Grimkin lied. Do you want to help me? Then what? help me get the trunk out of Slate's cabin and onto the wall. You know what? Forget it. Why should I help anybody? What's anybody ever done for me? You! <laughs> Snake food? Really? I told you to stay in your crit, fork, and sludge! What exactly were you gonna do? That's it! Bill Slank is drawing the line! I may not have been born with a silver spoon up my butt, but it doesn't mean I won't serve my tea with one! <laughs> Ew! That's gross! Get there, boy! He ain't going for Oh! 
Come on, baby. 
good for nothing player, scum! My white knight! Now let's get smoothing! Bully! Come for a walk in the room, Captain! Daddy! The trunk is on!
I want. Whoa! Hey, bird! What's up? Oh, me? Uh, not much. Got a name, saved the world, not too shabby. I just... I wonder if Teddy and Prentice dove off to ship before it sank. I mean, how weird would it be if they... Please let them be okay? Bird, we should make a pact. I don't leave you, you don't leave me. Deal? <laughs> no! Come back! I don't want to be alone. Come back! 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 Hey! Fine. No Molly, no Teddy, no Prentice. So what? This is perfect. Nobody's chasing after me with a stick. Nothing between me and the sky. I can just be a boy for a while. That's all I've ever wanted anyway. <sighs> I gotta get out of here! Sorry, did you want to be alone? No! Stay with me! Good answer. Thank you. You ready for this? Teddy floats. We jumped overboard and I held on to Teddy and the two of us bobbed all the way here. Prentice! No name! No, I got one now. It's Peter. Solid! Whatever. <laughs> Look! It's the wasp! Way out there, you see it? Oh no. It's still in one piece. I see where this is going. Where's mother? For the love of her name is Molly, and she probably drowned. No, no, she dove off as it went down. She's like a real swimmer. I think maybe she made it to the wasp. Or maybe she's floating on what's left of the Neverland. <laughs> Who is this wreckage, Romeo? Get me to shore, make it fast. You won't speak! He's boring my asylum! But we'll end up in China drifting like this out, and I'm in no mood for Mushu. Tried it once, went right through me like the winter wind in Wessex. Ah. <laughs> or maybe Molly's down there in the jungle. I say we wait for her up here. Oh, come on. Help me hide the trunk and we'll find some branches down the beach. At some point, we're gonna need food. <laughs> branches. What we need are branches. Hey, look. I think I found some. Sweet. Ow. Branches, branches. Guys got a joke for branches. No, so we can build a raft, you know? So we can get out to the wasp. We get to the wasp, and Molly's father will have to take us. Where? Home. Come on, everybody holds hands and no one gets lost. Clear? Crystal. Ew, your head's all sweaty. Yeah, because perspiration's the mark of true leadership. Ugh. Are we done? Yes. You there, Peter? Here. You there, Ted? Present. You there, Princess? Princess, you there? Teddy, you holding on to Princess? Teddy? Guys, where is everybody? Savages! 
savages. I know where savagery is, boy. When I was young man, English landed here and took me to your island in chains. Until, by kindness of fate, a shipwreck brought my baba to Mollusk Island. Yes, in your language, my name is Fighting Thrawn. And this, my son, Hawking Clam. <coughs> my son shall wear this hat once worn by my brutal British master. For years I serve as Kitchen slave. He beat me wrong, but I was brave. Until one day put him in his grave with a plate of poisoned pasta. Uh, thank you, yes, thank you. Yes. <coughs> Come, it is time. Time? Feeding time. Feeding time, finally. Not where you eat, piggy boy, but where you are eaten. You must answer to the law. The law of Mr. Green. Who's Mr. Green? We worship him, and he protects us from foreign troublemakers. Come now, we feed you to vicious crocodile. Ah, wait! Please don't feed us to any crocodile! First, first take us to Mr. Grin. A crocodile is Mr. Grin. Pasta! Wait! We can give you great gifts. Anti pasta! And you say gift, yes? Oh, yeah, a story. A bedtime story. Sleeping Beauty, right, guys? Sleeping Beauty, yeah. The thing is, I nodded off before the end. Yes, maybe they will too, and we can get out of here. Uh, we give you story, you let us live, and we leave your island. Deal? You are English, so I choose my words carefully. No! Please, Father. <laughs> your people would so enjoy a socializing experience that does not involve human sacrifice. Okie dokie. But if I am not entertained, it is Mr. Green for all of you. Assume the position. You have one minute. One minute? What am I supposed to do in one minute? I can't transform, I can't inhabit the character. Bring me the holy relic of my captivity. Here it is, mighty father. The kitchen timer. <laughs> you have one minute starting. One at a time. Once upon a time. That's how they only start. Upon a time, upon a time. Keep talking, talk. Hungry, Mr. Green. Go! Oh, okay, okay. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful baby princess. Wah! And an evil witch with a curse. Wah! 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 And the curse was very terrible for every time the baby cried. Oh, wah! The whole kingdom would fall asleep. Wes! 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 And Beauty, what's her name? Oh, thank you. Ah! Okay, so the king marched over to his favorite horse yeah! and he rode to the tallest tree and he climbed up to speak to the wise old owl. <laughs> the king, a real leader, sort of like me. Yay! Yeah, eh? Help piggy boy. Piggy boy! Sticky pudding! Sticky pudding! It's so good! Fifteen seconds, Mr. Grin. And soon, the princess was old enough to talk. Hi, I'm 16, beautiful, and in the market for something long-term. But nobody could stay awake long enough to kiss her. And everybody got so sleepy all of a sudden. And that's the story of Sticky Pudding. Sleeping Beauty! That's not the end. You missed the whole emotional arc of the story. Goody, another English. Where'd you come from? You should have stayed hidden, Mom. And your minute is up. You should have stayed hidden. You, ab you abused the concept of the theatre collective. It was too much for me. <laughs> oh, holy, holy, holy. Oh, that tag has some real talent. Yes, I have talent. They liked me. They really, really liked me. <laughs> holy, holy.
entertained, Mighty Baba? You win best prize! You got me with squid poop. Two thumbs up! Two thumbs way up! Oh, so you let us live! That was the deal, right? It's just so great, see, because you guys need us. We can do all the things you don't want to do anymore. We're illegal immigrants. That's what we're for. <laughs> Nice try. What the law is the law. All English must die. Calamari! Such life and death decisions are generally made by the English and not for the English. And the walls of Mr. Grin's cage are so very high, too high for any little boy or girl to climb, too dark to see the crocodile right in front of your face. Those hard things the boys are sitting on, they feel like bones. All in all, it's a bad day to be British. Teddy, I hope that was your stomach. I want to go home. What home? He made a deal with us and then he lied. Just like they always do. I hate grown-ups. Do something, Prentice. You're the leader. Have a plan. Eat the kitchen timer and leave us alone! Oh no! Wait, now we can count the seconds till we die. Oh, you know, this is all your fault, Molly. Making me feel like some big man who's gonna save the day. Well, I'm not a big man, and I can't save anything! Not the time for a hissy, Peter. You failed, so you try again. That's what my father always said. Then let him save us! in the trunk to my father. Then he'd have all the star stuff and... Molly! You idiot! She's cracking up. No, maybe she has a plan. I do. I have a plan. Eyes. Look at the eyes. This amulet is my plan. The star stuff inside is my plan. Are you with us, boy, or is it sulk and die? I'm with you. I'm with you. Good. It's a better team with you on it, Peter. Here it comes! Now get him to open wide. Tasty boy, fresh today. Come and eat me. Duck! The ringing of bells fills the air. And Mr. Grin begins to coo, gurgle, and groan. Bigger every second. Giant his mouth, giant teeth, giant appetite. Until the crocodile breaks through his bamboo and in airborne Leviathan! So basically, I'm thinking, let's get out of here! <laughs> Get him out of here. 
trunk. Remember the mission? Oh, forget the trunk. The trunk is safe. What we need is a raft. It is not your decision, Peter. Take me to the trunk. Protect the trunk. That's the mission. You have to have it your way, don't you? You know what? You are so stubborn. I'm not. R2. I'm not. R2. I'm not. R2. What's that? Blinking fierce. It's father. He's signaling me all the way from the walls. What does it mean? He's using Norse code. It's Norse code, everyone. Sorry, I think you mean Morse code. Not Morse code. Norse code from Norway, the ancient Viking signaling system. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What's he saying? Unless I miss my guess, he's saying, Laura de la Verna, Sina, Heine, Verna. And then he says, in Yeti, Molly, Doozy, Viking. That's first take Molly to the trunk. Kumahela high of water. Remember the mission. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> In Getty Blighty Juicy Clankin, take the trunk down to the beach. Mora Bella Verna, Sina Heine Verna. Father will be there with the long coat. Sina Heine will be Heine Verna. Um, safe if we can make it past the pirates and onto the beach. Didn't you remain to like an Essa, naked fresh tutor? Neighbor, neighbor, Nessa, neighbor, neighbor, Noka, Vita, Rublenka, sinking, hooking, keep the motor cooking, Uncle Dunkle, Papa. I love Daddy. <laughs> Women are tricky, man. No, I feel kind of stupid not knowing Norwegian. Oh, it isn't a contest. No, but Claire. I'd win. And the running. You're faster. Better than me. Well, you're the better leader. Oh, really? No. <laughs> now take me to that trunk. Molly's father. You don't need a raft to get home, and you don't need 
Do you think I've changed? You're dirtier. <laughs> right. So, um, I've been meaning to ask you about the, uh, you know, about that thing you did. What thing? The kiss, okay, the kiss. What kiss? The kiss, the one you gave me. Oh, the kiss. Well, what about it? <coughs> Nobody's ever wanted to kiss me, that's all. I didn't want to kiss you. We were about to be eaten alive. Well, I mean, I was just standing there and- Oh, for heaven's sakes, to such a fuss. Didn't you like it? No, it's... You didn't like it, and now you're telling me about how you didn't like it. Unbelievable! I'm not saying I didn't like it. I'm just... Then what are you saying? Well, I guess I'm saying, mmm, poor. <laughs> I guess I'm asking. Oh, you stop that right now. I won't answer any such question. You're inclining towards the sentimental, and that's all well and good for a boy. Inclining toward what? But the fact is, we girls cannot afford to be sentimental. Instead, we must be strong. And when I marry, my husband will have to... Marry? Whoa, you thought I was asking... Oh, you. not you, you swat! Ah, oh, the ego. <laughs> <laughs> and when I marry, I shall make it very clear to this person that sentimentality is not on the calendar. He shall have to laugh it or leave it. And if he should leave, then I'll pin my hair back and stay a spinster and volunteer weekends at hospital. <laughs> and I'll love words for their own sake, like hyacinth and piccadilly and onyx. And I'll have a good old dog, and think what I like, and be a part of a different sort of family. The one with friends, you know, who understand that things are only worth what you're willing to give up for them. Even if I, in the face of death, I may have... Wanted to? I didn't say that. Got it. Good. Why? Now that you're here, I might just rest my eyes for a little. No, Molly, the leader has to be a... Peter, where's Peter? The mollusk got him, remember? Is that the sun? What's for breakfast? Ow. <laughs> Did he say the sun? Because if you can see the sun, if you can see the sky at all. We must be very near the beach. Come on, boys, we made it. Boys and fruitcakes, brats! 
the sheets in a convent. <laughs> empty? It can't be empty. You mean all this time? Where's my treasure? The sea water got in it. It must have dissolved. Moose nuggets. Gold and diamonds don't dissolve. But star stuff does. Isn't that right, Daddy? Starbucks, Starbucks, where's Starbucks? I don't know. It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter now. Nobody gets his hands on it. Nobody gets what he wants. Enough of this conversation. See, this is why I hate it. Give him the finger. <laughs> Not you, Pan, but believe. 
believe this? Where are you caught home? Keep your back to the wall, for just when you least expect it, there I'll be, the stash right under your nose. Ha ha! Now, 
You're going to need something to protect you. Now, it seems to me, we take the last of the star stuff, like so. Now, stir vigorously. I think it's anti-clockwise. Here, Peter, lend a hand. Stir the Moran. Whoa! The hat's getting all warm and tingly, just like the... And so? Wizard! Ah, my hair! Come here, you! I can totally do that trick. Hey, Teddy, don't eat it! <laughs> nice to know I've still got it. If you really wanted to protect him, you'd take him home with us. Time's going out, my lord! I'm afraid it's time for our goodbyes. Be a woman. Here's my address in London. You don't have to write to me every day, just when you feel like it. Well, you know my address. Molly Island. <laughs> Mollusk Island, you mean? Or maybe I'll call it Neverland. You know? To remember. <laughs> oh, here. How to heroes. Wear it when you get home. To remember. Molly, now the tides won't wait. I want you to take care of Prentice and Teddy. Well, five more minutes. Come on, a bedtime story. There'll be other tides both there. You see, she wants to stay. She can't. But I don't want it to end. Soon, Peter, you'll forget. And it won't hurt anymore. No. It's supposed to hurt. That's how you know it meant something. This isn't the end, Peter. You'll remember every single detail. And you're a better leader. Really? No. <laughs> you won't stay mad at me forever, will you? Go on, get lost. I'm bound to grow up. What would we do? Be friends? In a year, that'd be hard. In five years, it'd be silly. But in 20 years, it would just be sad. You sound older already. That thing you did, against impossible odds, that's what the two of you will always have. That thing we did. Against impossible odds. Peter watches the wasp get smaller and smaller, wondering about his adventure, about Molly, and about that kiss. It would be here that Peter would teeter, at the top of the roller coaster, on the verge of becoming what he'd always hated, a grown-up. And then, as promised, he began to forget. He stayed right where he was, the outsider. And Molly, true to her word, would remember everything, until one night many years later. She stared out the nursery window, watching Peter fly off with her daughter in tow. And this grown-up Molly would comfort the new Nana, the good old dog who tended her children. Oh, don't worry, Nana darling. I'd always hoped that if Peter came to visit, that my daughter would take my place. And once Wendy grows up... I hope she will have a little girl. A little girl who will go off with him in turn. We go on and on. Dear Nana, as long as children are young and innocent, and rude and juvenile and heartless, past all the jostles of life, till we fly back home. <laughs> Get in the way! Oh, calm down! I think... 
Yup, I think she wants me to race you down to the grotto. Look, Stash sliced it open. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's hard to believe you're still single. <laughs> How am I supposed to race them to the grotto if I don't run? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can do what? What'd she say? What'd she say? To have faith <clears throat> is to have wings. Wait a minute. Did you say grotto? How'd you like to just be a boy for a while? The star stuff water can do that. It makes you what you want to be. A lawyer! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is going to be one awfully big adventure. All right, you said it. Ready? Ready. Set. 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 Why not? There's 